Today we're going to discuss something that will hopefully happen to all of us. You reach into your parts bin for an emergency ESC, only to realize that your decade doesn't plug into the current decade. So the topic for today is getting some XT60 connectors onto there. But I'm getting quite ahead of myself. The relevant question, of course, being why XT60? The answer may surprise you. And now a word from my sponsor, which is my loving wife. She says to get out of the basement or at least get to the point. Point being that I'm a bit of a cheapskate, also known as the only option if you don't have a lot of money. So the way I pick the XD60 plug is that while looking at sites such as AliExpress and so on, you'll find copies of most relevant plugs, except for the XT60 plugs that I use today. That doesn't mean that they're not available, simply that they're not copies, but made by the company itself. What do we need then? Beyond the beefy soldering iron and the plugs themselves, I recommend either getting some helping hands, or you can get something more dedicated, such as these ones that you can find on, well, similar cheap sites. Mostly because things are going to get very hot, really fast, and, well, stuff hurts. Wire strippers are a total nice to have, but only if you intend to use them for other projects. With this kind of wire gauge, you could just use a knife. A proper knife, a sharpened spoon may work, just not recommended. Unmarked bags of connectors, just make sure to get the ones that have the grey lid with them. Supposedly, the lid means that you don't need to have extra heat shrink tubing, but that's what you say if you don't have any heatshrink tubing. But I do, because, well, I value my electronics. So, let the purging begin. With this TBLE 04S from Tamiya. Just a bit of snip snip and no sensible way back. Strip away some of the insulation using a sharpened spoon. Doesn't have to be much. 3 to 4 millimeters is enough. Whichever tool you may end up using, one can't help but marvel at the engineering of stuff like this. Pivoting over to tools for melting metal, ideally you have a soldering iron with enough control that you can set it to around 380 degrees Celsius. Depending on the type of solder and how powerful your iron is. Before all that, we need to have a look at the connector itself. This is the main connector that we need. Looking a bit closer at the top of the connector, you'd be tempted to look at the thing as a metal cap that needs to be filled with solder. That's not how you do it. That's how you melt connectors. Instead, what you want to do is ensure that the cable sticks as closely to the back wall as possible. Then add enough solder to ensure that it's not going anywhere. Also note the markings for polarity. Pre-tin your wires. It will take a while and it takes a lot of heat because these are very thick cables. And like that pause, it's going to feel like it's taking forever. Just don't go touching it straight afterwards, because that stuff is still hot. Add your heatshrink tubing, followed by the grey connector lid. It may be a bit awkward to work with, but just slide it on down there and we'll see how it goes. Getting that connector out here, I've inserted it into the holder. To get things started, we'll add some solder to it. Trying to heat and get as much as possible onto that back wall. As to actually attaching the wire, you need something to hold it with. Either tweezers or third hands. I tried filming this as close to 
what I could get it, but it's uh, very awkward to do because you need to melt both parts and get a good firm connection. If it seems to light on the solder, come back to it after soldering the other wire into place. Pull the heatshrink tubing over the metal contacts. Ideally, you should shrink it down using some hot air, but I tend to get lazy, so I just use some of the residual heat of the soldering iron instead. Your final step is to slide on the grey lid. It's going to be stuck on there pretty hard, so you need to press it down against the table surface to get it to click into place. As you no doubt observed, there's no strain relief inside, so don't go pulling on the cables, pull on the grey part. Before plugging it into something, just make sure that you have the polarity correct. Black on black, red on red. Okay, so now we have an updated ESE. What about batteries? Well, the process is just about the same, except for one huge warning. RC batteries can deliver a huge amount of power at once, so never put yourself in the position where the contacts can come into contact with each other. Always work with one wire at a time. You strip it, solder it into place, and then add a heat shrink on top before stripping the next wire. Working with the batteries may require you to use a bit more heat than with the ESC, but thankfully the wires are usually longer, so even then they are still easier to work with. I'm not sure if anyone would find all of this accurate, but I'm just a guy on the internet. You get what you pay for. As to what the future brings, hopefully more stuff. Bye!